Coming up, it's the new Note 5, an electronic scooter that will kill you, and a case that costs more than an iPhone on contract. You gotta watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to Harry's dot com. Get five dollars off your first purchase by entering the code Before You Buy when you check out. And buy the Ring Video Doorbell. With the built in HD camera and microphone, you can monitor your front door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like being home even when you're not. Right now, get $10 off the Ring Video Doorbell when you go to ring.com slash before you buy. Well, hey, and welcome to Before You Buy. It's Twit's product review show where we take the latest gadgets and gizmos that we get here into the brick house and we give them out to members of the Twit family, the Twit staff, the people who can give you the most honest reviews possible. Now, this first one is a product that has gotten a lot of good and bad attention over the last couple of weeks. It's the Note 5. So we had our very own Leo Laporte take a look at it, and, well, this is what he found. I have come to talk about my new favorite phone. I know I have a new one every month, but... This one's pretty impressive. This is the brand new Galaxy Note 5. And almost everything I'm going to talk about today would also apply to the newly announced Galaxy S6 Plus. 5.7 inches, an incredible screen. Beautiful, crisp screen. And a great looking body, too. They've replaced the cheesy plastic back of the Note 4 with a, with a nice glass back. Yeah, it's a little bit slippery, but boy, it sure feels good in your hand. And I have to say, given the size of the screen, you compare it, for instance, to the uh, the last year's uh, uh, iPhone 6 Plus. iPhone 6 Plus has a five and a half inch screen, a smaller screen, and it looks like a bigger phone. It's heavier. They, they, they've really done a nice job with this Note 5. Let's talk a little bit about specs. Eight core processor, actually it's two quad core Exynos processors in this phone. A fast one for when you really need the extra power and a little bit slower one that you use almost all the time for uh, battery conservation. Four gigs of RAM, and I have to say, in, in most respects, this is very similar to the Galaxy S6, which I have, uh, but giving it one gig more RAM makes a big difference in terms of performance. The S6 hesitates a little bit. It's a little slow, as some Android phones are. I never see that with a Note 5. This phone is fast. It's fluid. The screen, more than 500 dots per inch. The best camera... On a phone, absolutely an incredible camera that gives you a lot of nice features, including the ability to shoot raw and a stream directly to YouTube feature, which is an exclusive right now with these new Samsung phones, although I imagine that'll migrate to other phones soon enough. Make this just a beast of a phone. Fingerprint reader on here doesn't require swiping anymore. You just touch it. It works quickly and accurately. The fingerprint reader is uh, I think superb. Easy to work on with that 5.7 inch screen and the split screen features. You could get a lot of productivity. And of course, one thing that is unique in the Samsung Note 5 compared to the S6 Plus, it does have a stylus. Now I do have to bring up Pengazi. Maybe you saw me on MacBreak Weekly when I was just playing with a stylus and inadvertently inserted it the wrong way. Now if you say, well, gosh, that must be hard to do. Let me just show you how easily it slides in the wrong way. I don't even have to push it. It fits in perfectly. Unfortunately, when it does, it will grab a little teeny plastic lever in here. That's the sensor that tells the phone when you've removed the pen. And it grabs the lever, won't come out. In almost every case, when you pull it out, you break the lever, you disable that ability to sense whether the pen is in the phone. The pen still works. You still have all the pen capabilities. What you lose is one thing, and I can't demonstrate it for you because it no longer works on my phone, the ability to draw on the off screen. Uh, before I broke the pen sensor, removing the pen would turn off this special mode, turn on the special mode that I could take notes on a darkened screen. I don't really miss that. There is an upside to breaking your sensor, incidentally. Um, 
you can turn off the sensor detection feature and save some battery life. I noticed a considerable improvement, like an hour a day battery life, by turning off that sensor. Let's talk about battery life. Of course, compared to the old Note 4, you no longer can remove that cheesy plastic back and use a second battery or put in an SD card. They've eliminated that, and they eliminated that feature in the Note 5. Um, I'm getting about 12 hours battery life. That is the best battery life I've ever gotten on any note. I don't know what they're doing to improve the battery life. And the quick charging means that I can get through to dinner, charge it at dinner, and be back at 100% uh, before I'm done. Quick charging not only on wired but on wireless, I think that's a nice feature. I'm going to give it a pass on the battery life. Uh, they've done a lot to improve it. It doesn't get me through the whole day, but it's close enough uh, that I'm going to say it's adequate. Not great, but adequate. It's not enough for me to say, don't buy this phone. I think it's an incredible, incredible phone. Probably the nicest phone I've ever used. Let's go through the pros and cons real quickly. On the pro side, best screen ever. I mean, really. Best camera ever. This, this is an incredible hardware device. Uh, the S Pen is, is a fabulous feature. If you do take notes, it gives you a lot of control that you wouldn't have with the tip of your finger. Um, on the con side, the battery life isn't as long as I'd like it to be, and without a removable battery, you're stuck with recharging it in the middle of the day, but fast charging makes that a little bit less of a pain. The biggest negative on this, the biggest knock, is its price. This is a premium-looking phone at a premium price. This 64-gig version from AT&T cost me $850. That's painful, especially when phone prices are starting to go down. Uh, you, you get what you pay for, though. This is a gorgeous phone. So, after looking at the pros and cons, even after breaking my sensor by putting in the pen the wrong way, I'm still going to have to give it a buy. This is easily the best looking, the best usability, the, the best Android device I've ever used. In fact, I would say it's the best phone I've ever used. A definite buy on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. You'll just be digging deep to do it. That's it. Back to the studio you go. From the mouth of the tech guy himself, it's a buy for the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Now, we, we kind of saw that coming. I mean, the Note is typically a refined product. It's, it tends to be a bit more expensive, but with that beautiful screen, with that beautiful camera, and with plenty of horsepower under the hood, it's, it's definitely going to have uh, Leo well, uh, using it for at least the next couple of weeks before he has to move on. Now, we need to move on. Phones are great. But sometimes we as geeks need to make our way around town, which is why we gave our very own Brian Burnett, the cranky hippo, an ET Wow Boost electric scooter to see if maybe this might be his new mode of transportation. He got to play with it for a month, and, uh, well, this is what he thought. This is Brian Burnett, and I will be introducing to you the ET Wow ET E2. E2 is how you say it. S2 Booster Electric Scooter. The idea is simple. It's a uh, front-wheel drive electric scooter for assaulting the urban environment or making it to your next class across campus in a hurry. Getting down to business, the list price for the E2 is $1,200 and with a 280-watt LiPo battery has a range of 21 miles. Powering the scooter is a brushless DC electric 500-watt motor with a torque output of 15 newton meters. What does that equate to? Me being able to reach the top speed of 19 miles per hour with a 165 pound frame fairly quickly. The added benefit is the sweet front wheel burnouts. And everyone loves the smell of burnt scooter rubber. Well, maybe not everybody. In terms of handling, the S2 is pretty agile. Minor pavement bumps and dips are, handed w are handled well with the front and rear suspension, making traversing sidewalks a pleasant experience. It's not until you hit rough asphalt or a small pothole that the suspension starts to suffer. Petaluma is pretty well known for its crummy roads, so it wasn't too difficult to find one near the Twit Studio. The S2 is capable of climbing a hill close to 25 degrees, but at that slope, it'll do it at a 10 miles per hour, and it definitely struggles. As for attacking hills with any of a steeper incline, it just gets kind of sad. After a long day of attacking hills and potholes, I took it took a little less than two hours to reach a full charge. Packing up the S2 is quick and similar to most scooters. The handles fold in and there's a release lever at the bottom, a hinge that allows for the compact form. I wouldn't want to carry the S2 for a long trip because the weight is around 24 pounds, which isn't too bad and you can drag it uh, from the front wheel behind you. 
As far as the overall quality of the hardware, uh, everything seems really nice. From the paint to the fit and finish, it seems really well put together. It's not until you start riding the E2 that the fear sets in, mainly due to the throttle mechanism and lack of a linear power band. You wouldn't describe it more as a throttle, but more of as a on or off switch that propels you forward when engaged. To the left is another thumb lever, uh, which is for the braking. Why is it a thumb braking button and not a lever, you may ask? Well, there's actually some pretty cool tech called KERS, which stands for Kinetic Energy Recover System, and you F1 fans know what I'm talking about, but if you've never heard of it, it recovers the kinetic en energy under braking and helps recharge the scooter's battery. The major flaw with this system on this scooter is the braking can be very jarring, giving you a sense that you're going to go over the handlebars, which is not fun. Also, when trying to come to a fast, complete stop, the stopping power is not confidence-inspiring. You can use the rear brake, which helps, but even in conjunction with the front brakes, it makes stopping quickly a bit uh, exciting. One Amazon reviewer pointed out that the braking on moist surfaces can be a tad more exciting because the rear brake is directly applied to the rear wheel, which can be hampered when wet. As we've had no rain in California, I didn't really have a chance to test that theory out, which I'm totally okay with. Coming down from a steep hill using both brakes was fun, but of course I like living on the edge. My biggest complaint is that the bars wiggle back and forth while riding. When trying to use the throttle, it makes for a very choppy ride. It's most notable at slow speeds when trying to perform maneuvers around a crowded sidewalk or trying to run over your co-host. The LCD at the top of the bars is backlit and is easy to read at a glance. It shows you your miles per hour, odometer, and battery life. The front LED light is nice to have, but it isn't going to light your way at night, and it's much better used if, to give your coworkers light for uh, making that cocktail. Thank you, Anthony. Finally, the horn button is nice is a nice bonus, but it does sound more like a fire alarm. Time for pros and cons. Pros. The power is my number one. It definitely takes off from a stop pretty quick as long as the slope isn't too steep. The charge time is under two hours, and the third pro would be range. Uh, you can do 24 miles, but with the recharge system, I was averaging a little bit beyond that. Cons, uh, the brakes. Uh, the curve system is fancy and cool, but it does not do a good job of slowing down the scooter. The controls might not be so bad if the bars weren't so wobbly when holding them. And finally, the price. It comes in at a list price of $1,200. You can find it cheaper on Amazon, somewhere around $930. But when you compare that to other scooters on the market, it's not really that competitive. Overall, I enjoyed the time I spent with the E2 S2 scooter, but when comparing the price and the controls, I'd have to give it a don't buy. If you want a scooter that isn't going to treat you like a baby and that you live for the thrill of not being able to brake, then maybe the scooter will give you the added chest hair experience. But if you're looking for something more sporty, safe, and easier to control, take a look at the rear wheel drive Eco Rico M5 or M3, which are pretty close in price. This has been my review of the E2 S2 booster scooter. Thanks for watching. Now, Brian calls it the E2, but he also says sabotage. Uh, I have it on good authority, Carly, that it's the E.T. Wow, which doesn't actually make a whole lot more sense. And unfortunately, from Cranky Hippo, it's a don't buy. I will say that all of us in the studio got a chance to play. And it was, it was a fun device, but like Brian pointed out, there are so many things wrong with it. For me, it was the non-linear throttle, that, that little kick. It would start off very slow, but then suddenly it would kick into high gear. It's a really, really good way to hurt yourself. So hopefully you watched this video because you got to watch before you die. See what I did there? Now, when we come back, we've got some Tiesto headphones that we're going to be looking at. But first, let's go ahead and take a moment to thank the first sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy. Now, let me ask you something. Do you, do you like shaving? Of course you don't, because shaving is a chore, right? I mean, it's not just the, the physical thing that you have to do when you shave. It's all the things you have to do before you start to shave. You got to go to the store and, and find those blades that are locked behind a cabinet because evidently they're made out of gold or uranium. You got to find some employee who doesn't want to be there to unlock it and take it to the counter. It's, it's just a hassle. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get all the accoutrements, all the fineries of shaving delivered to your door so that you could turn shaving from a chore 
into an experience. Well, that's why we're proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy. Now, Harry's is a premium shaving company. They understand that, that you need to get into the mood to shave. You, uh, you have to understand that it's something that you want to do, not something that you have to do. They make shaving fun. They give us high quality razors at about half the price of those big brand blades. They make their own razors in their own factory in Germany. Their engineers make them for sharpness and for high performance. And then of course they ship them to your door so you never have to go out and find some person who really doesn't want to talk to you. Now, the best thing is that Harry's guarantees your satisfaction. In each kit, you'll get a razor with a handle that looks and feels great and three razor blades and foaming shave gel. Now, the starter Truman set is an amazing deal, and you get all of it for just $15. I've been using Harry's for a while now, and Harry's gives me a clean, close, and comfortable shave. I love the look and the feel of the set. It just feels fancy, and it's, it makes me want to shave. It makes me want to enjoy the shaving experience. I tell you, Harry's isn't just something that you use to shave. It's something that you use to feel the shave. Now, right now, I want you to try, to ha try Harry's for yourself. Go to harrys.com and get $5 off your first purchase with the code before you buy. That's harrys, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com, and use the code before you buy at checkout. We thank Harry's for their support of Before You Buy. Well, folks, you know that we're all about the sound here at Twit TV, so we gave our very own Tanya a set of Tiesto headphones to see if they might be the... Well, the beat for her. This is what she found. Hi, I'm Tanya Hall. I'm a host and producer here at Twit TV, and I'm here to review two headphones from Audiofly. This is from the Club Life line, the Paradise and the Adagio. So Club Life is a new line that Audiofly came up with after partnering with Tiesto, the DJ. Tiesto reached out to Audiofly and they decided to partner and come up with a line of three different headphones, uh, an entry level, a mid level, and a high end. And today we're going to review the entry level and the high end. So the entry level is, um, it comes in um, a box with the headphones, a cloth bag, and some silicone uh, adjustable tips. The headphones themselves have a rubber cord. It doesn't actually have an L or an R, but it does have the Braille R, so you can feel it in the dark. They are actually, they does come in three different colors. So it comes in green, aqua, and pink. Um, at the center here of this side of the left, you have a microphone. If you'll notice on the actual silicone tips, Audiofly has done something a little different for these, and that is the color on the inside, a separate silicone than the actual cap itself, just for a little bit of design. I listened to these quite a bit. They um, actually were pretty good. These are a, a $30 headset. So they're, I guess they're entry level. You know, they're they're basically for, you know, talking on the phone, maybe listening to some of um, Tiesto's music. But the experience, uh, you know, you're not going to get the same as you would obviously with a high-end headset, but they are fun and they do glow in the dark. Uh, I was a little skeptical actually uh, before I opened these because I wondered if they would maybe skimp on quality but of course they didn't. It's Audiofly. Um, they had these come with um, a leather bag, also adjustable tips. These are, the cord itself is a woven fabric. So it's a really nice quality, which you would expect. The quality difference was pretty dramatic, as you might expect. The high-end headsets were definitely worth it. You you could pick up on the bass, the every note, every uh, part of the music was very identifiable. You really felt like you were, I listened to, in fact, today, one of the Tiesto concerts, and you really felt like you were at the concert. You It definitely um, was. Uh, it took you there. The other thing that's a little bit different about these earphones is they're also designed at an angle to fit in your ears a little bit differently uh, than some other earbuds. Um, I, I found them actually quite comfortable. And these also come in a couple of different colors. Overall, I think the Club Life, I think uh, Tiesto made a great decision partnering with Audiofly. These are very similar to some of the uh, traditional Audiofly uh, headphones. Um, if you are interested in any Audiofly products. These are equivalent and certainly equal in quality. 
I liked both the low end and the high end. The pros and cons, I would say, um, the pros with the low end is that they are glow in the dark. So that's kind of fun. And they're actually really reasonably priced. Um, and they're also a really good quality. So I think they're going to last you a long time. And the high end as well, you can tell these are really made well. And they are going to last you a long time. The high end was... Um, $150, although I think I found them as low as $130. You're going to pay over $100 for a really good quality um, headphones anyway. And these I really liked. They were incredibly comfortable and I would highly recommend them. I give the Audio Flies Club Lifeline both Paradise and Adagio a buy. It's a buy for the Audio Fly Club Life. Yeah, Club Life, because you know that neon green, it's definitely for clubby people, from, from Tanya. Now, Tanya is, uh, is, is one of the people around here who takes a hard look at the products. In fact, she gets most of the products for Before You Buy, so when she recommends something, you know it's got to be good. Now, coming up next, we, we want to shift gears. We, we just talked about clubbing. Let's talk about something a little less exciting, at least to normal people, something that could be very exciting to geeks, and that is tiny little PCs. This is the ECS Leva. Now this is, it's, it's sort of a, the nook, the next unit of computing. It's a tiny little fanless computer that just may be your next buy. ECS made a moderate splash last year with the introduction of the Leva series of PCs. And next unit of computing sized Bay Trail powered box that offered Windows capable power in a hand size silent sub $200 package. It will run desktop applications. It will run your standard Windows programs as long as you're comfortable with what the performance level will be. For example, HD playback, video playback, right? Um, it will run 1080p in HTML5, but it doesn't run 1080p in Flash very well. Uh, it runs 1080p playback on MKV files as well. This you know, is a machine for Bejeweled if ever there was one. Uh, yeah. Also I, I, I want to give a shout out to Sebastian for also pointing out that this could be a net top PC. And when I hear that, we're talking about, you know, home theater PC streamer. We're talking about basic desktop functionality because the, the vast majority of things we do on our computers these days in offices for most people do not require a smidge of the power that's available in like a Core i5, much less a Core i7 processor. Sure. The Leva X2 is the latest version of ECS's mini PC system. And though it's updated, ECS managed to keep the price point at 170 for our 2 gig, 32 gig version, with a 4 gig, 64 gig version available for 240. From the start, it's obvious that ECS put a bit more effort into the design of the X2 than the original Leva. Gone is the boxy shape and set top black in favor of the pure white 6 inches by 3 and a quarter inches by 2 inches, 2.4 pound digital pill package. Of course, real techies care more about performance and function than aesthetics. And ECS worked on that too. The X2 has three USB 3.0 ports in the front, with one of them being an easy charge port that will fast charge USB devices even if the unit is off. To the rear of the unit, you'll find a D-sub connector, combo audio jack, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, and the power port. ECS also includes a mounting plate that will adapt the X2 to a VESA stand. Inside the X2, an enormous heatsink and heat pipe take up the bottom third of the case, directly cooling the CPU and memory parts, negating the need for a fan. ECS ditched the Bay Trail system on a chip and opted instead for the 14 nanometer Intel Braswell N3050 SoC, a Celeron dual core running at 1.62.1 GHz with 1 MB of L2 cache. Soldered to the board is 2 GB of system memory and 32 GB of Toshiba eMMC flash storage. There are two M.2 slots on the board. The topside slot is filled with a dual band 2230 802.11 AC card while the M.2 slot on the underside of the board can be populated with a 2241 or 2280 SSD. Pre-installed is Windows 8.1, which is eligible for a Windows 10 upgrade, though without an SSD upgrade in the M.2 slot, you'll need to follow ECS's instructions on downloading and clearing space to make it all fit. Performance is okay. Not great, but about what you would expect from a fanless unit, and more than enough for typical web work. Now, of course, this is not a speed demon. That's not what you buy it for. So if you're looking to do intensive gaming, first-person shooting, or even if you want to do like minimal video editing, this 
is not the package for you. But what it does do really well is to give you a silent. I mean silent, there are no moving parts, no hard drives, no fans, no nothing in this. This is, this is purely for that little box that's gonna get tucked away, the, maybe mounted behind a monitor, which is why they give you the VESA mount. And at that job, it excels. Now let's go ahead and look at the pros and the cons. On the pro side, it's small and light. And I actually like the, des the design. A lot of people don't like this pill. They kind of like the old net top, set top look that the, the original Oliva had. I like this. It's, it does feel nice. It feels solid, which, which makes me feel, you know, it, it's a bit more quality. Also, we've seen inside of it and we know exactly how packed it is. So they, they've made use of all the space. It's perfect, perfect for hidden applications. If you want a PC that you could hide away behind a TV and it'll run Netflix, it will run YouTube, it will run Amazon Prime, it'll run all those things, this is actually a really good option. Also, low heat means low power. This thing is gonna pull a total of about eight watts, maybe even less. I mean, that's really if you're pushing it. So this is an incredibly economical way to get a, a decent amount of computing power. Also, since it's quiet, it means that you're gonna be able to use it for applications where you, you don't want any extra noise. Again, not a whole lot of power, but with this much competency, and remember, it comes with, with Windows 8, upgradable to Windows 10. So for 170 bucks, that's actually a really good deal. On the con side, there, there are a, a couple of interesting design cha changes that they made that I, I wouldn't have. First, these USB ports in the front, Great, I, I like having USB ports, but there are none in the back, which means to use this as a PC, I have to have cables coming from both sides of the unit. That just makes it messy. I wish they had put in at least one in the back, just, just one, so that I could have everything running out of the back and give it a nice, clean look. The other thing is the soldered system memory and, uh, and, and storage. Yeah, you can use the M2 slot, M.2 slot to upgrade with, a, with an SSD. That's gonna add to the expense but you can't upgrade the system memory. Unless you buy the four gigabyte, 64 gigabyte version, you're stuck with two gigabytes. It works fine for most applications, but when I compare this to something like the actual Intel Nook, the one that kicked off this, this whole size format, that's gonna be com comparable in price, but far more expandable. In fact, I can get a Nook with four gigabytes of memory and a really inexpensive SATA uh, a drive for just a tiny bit more than the Leva. That being said, the question is, does this provide something that all of the other competitors can't? Or does it provide it at a price point that's better than all the other competitors? And for that, I say, yeah, it actually does. It may not be the fastest net top on the market. It may not be the most compact net top on the market. It's definitely not the most powerful or the most expandable net top, but it does what it does incredibly well at this price point. I probably wouldn't go for the four gigabyte, 64 gigabyte version, but the two gigabyte, 32 gigabyte version with this M.2 expandability, with the feature set that's built in for $170 or so, yeah, I think that's an absolute buy. Now, when we come back, we've got a parting shot for the people who wanna pay as much for their case as they do for their phone. But before we do that, let's go ahead and thank the second sponsor, of this episode of Before You Buy, and it's gotta be the Ring Video Doorbell. Now, what is the Ring Video Doorbell? Well, just like the name might imply, it's a doorbell for your house. It's a way to have caller ID for the people who are visiting. Now, the nice thing about this is that they include everything that you need in the kit. If you look at the Ring Video Doorbell kit, they've, they've got the doorbell itself, they've got the drill bit, the, uh, the tools, even the level so that you can make it even. And what I really like is that you can power this off of the house or off of an internal battery. That little micro USB connector means that one charge We'll, we'll set this for a year. Or I could run it off of the wires that are connected to my existing doorbell, and it will make sure that I can power it, uh, well, anything, anytime I need it. It connects to the internal Wi-Fi of your house, and once you're connected, it will allow you to have a two-way conversation over your mobile device, your phone or your tablet, with anyone who comes to your house and rings the doorbell. Beyond that, it also does motion detection. So if anyone comes within range of the sensor, it will record it. Now here's the thing I really, really love. The Ring Vito doorbell was created not just as a way to turn your house into a, uh, well, a caller ID system, but it was also created because the people at Ring knew that we have to worry about security. And so this is what they did. They made this wonderful application that uh, if you go ahead and switch to my camera here, Victor, which allows me to record all of the motion events. So in this case, this, this is my family home in Henderson, Nevada. But I actually have my mother, that's my mother there. But the cool thing is I can find out 
all the motion events. I can find out if someone has been casing the joint. I can find out if someone keeps looking through the windows. I can find out if there's some weird truck that keeps passing by the house at a certain day, a certain time of the day. It gives me peace of mind because I can make sure my parents are safe. And, well, really, is there anything better that you can get than that? Now, the Ring Veto Doorbell is something that it, once you try, you will understand. It's not just another gadget and gizmo that you want to get for your house because everyone has it. It's something that you'll actually use each and every single day. You can put your mind at ease and protect your home with the Ring Video Doorbell, which Time Magazine named as one of the top gadgets of 2014. And right now, you can get $10 off the normal price. Protect your home and have peace of mind with Ring. Go to ring.com slash before you buy. That's ring.com slash before you buy. And we think, thank the Ring Video Doorbell for their support of Before You Buy. Now, folks, it's time to get into our parting shot. We decided to take a look at uh, something that was, well, a little strange. What if there was a case, a beautiful case, but an expensive case, one that cost as much as your phone? Would it be worth it to get it? Well, we gave it over to our very own Megan Maroney, and uh, she gave it a test to find out if the Mod 3 Radius TI case is for you. I am Megan Maroney, and I host Tech News Tonight, and i5 for the iPhone, and iOS Today, and I am here to review the Radius case by Mod 3. This is the all-titanium version, and you can see that it straps across my phone and protects on the edges. Um, I love this case. It is my favorite case because it does a lot of things that other cases don't do. It leaves room for the camera. It leaves room for the headphone jack. It doesn't cover my beautiful phone or make it look ugly. It's made from really nice materials, titanium. It's rigid. Uh, it's easy to put um, on and off. You just kind of, I wouldn't say easy. It's not that difficult. You just kind of pull it like that and then you can put it back on and off. This thing keeps your phone looking beautiful and keeps it safe. Uh, the pros, as I said, are the way it looks. It doesn't cover up any of the back or any of the sides or any of the other parts of my beautiful iPhone. Uh, it is made of rigid materials. That is another pro. The only con is the price. It is $240. Now, uh, when the new iPhones come out, I don't know if the price will come down for this one fits only the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Uh, these kind do. So maybe the price will go down. I don't know. But $240 is a lot. Um, you could basically take a cheaper Android phone and strap it on the back for the same price. If you really like the design, uh, then there are cheaper versions of it. Uh, on You can check out the Mod 3 website. There are versions that are different color. Uh, there's aluminum. So check out those are cheaper. Um, they run more in the $80 range. That is the Radius case by Mod 3. And I am Megan Maroney. Back to you, Padre. It's a buy for the Mod 3 Radius TI case from Megan Maroney. I, I'm not a big case person myself, but if you want a case that will wrap your phone, even though it costs as much as your phone, that might be the buy for you. I want to thank all of our reviewers for their honest reviews. Of, co of course, to Leo Laporte, to Brian Burnett, to Megan Maroney, and to Tanya Hall. We couldn't have the show without them. And of course, we couldn't have the show without you. So uh, why not drop by live? We do the show live every week at Friday at 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Just jump into live.twit.tv and you'll be able to catch what we're doing, pre-show, post-show, everything in between. If you're watching us live, you should also jump into our chat room at irc.twit.tv. It's a way to be part of the magic that is Twit TV. Finally, I want to thank everyone who makes this show possible, to Lisa and to Leo, of course, and to Carson, my super producer, and to Victor. Victor, I don't know if you've got a camera on yourself, but if you could please say hi and wave to the crowd and, and, and you know, remind them that you do so much of the magic that they see in their downloaded videos. Yeah, that's Victor. He's, he's a little bit shy. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Palliser, and remember, you got to watch before you buy. <laughs>